Hello everyone, my name is Joseph Bernard. And with this presentation, I'll be talking about uh, my research on retracing the Jewish refugees who obtained the Haitian nationality during the Shoah, especially during the period from 1938 to 1942. This is the outline of my presentation. I'll be putting the show into context, especially through the EGAN conference and the SSNW affair in Cuba. Uh, we'll be discussing after about the legal options for refuge in Haiti, especially uh, the, through the decree law of May 29, 1939. Then we'll go and discuss about some key research questions uh, and then present the results of the, uh, of the research. And, and discuss a bit about the end of the process, the naturalization process, and then uh, give some May conclusions. So to start with the context, we'll, we need to talk about um, the Egan Conference that took place in France in July 1938. And the aim of this uh, conference was to find a solution to the Jewish migration um, from uh, German occupied territories. So Haiti took part to the Egan Conference, especially through uh, Mr. Leo Beltibou, and it is important, important to mention that um, Haiti did not accept to, right away to, to, to welcome uh, Jewish refugees. However, they changed their mind, especially uh, after Kristallnacht that happened beginning of November 1938. So a second event to mention in this presentation is the SSNW affair. The SSNW was a, a ship that left Germany uh, towards um, Cuba. And on board this ship, there were more than 900 refugees. Most of them were Jewish. And although they had uh, a Cuban visa, the Cuban authorities refused uh, them. So uh, after a lot of negotiations, well, almost all these refugees came back to Europe, not to Germany, but a part went to France, a little part went to um, UK, and there's not a lot of part that went to, to Belgium. And it is estimated about two thirds of, um, of these Jewish refugees on board the SSN, we died during the Holocaust. So you can see in, on the slide some headlines of the New York Times uh, about the SSN, we affair. So the SSN, we, uh, like we said, uh, affair took place in Cuba. So Cuba is one of the main, the, the main islands of the Caribbean. And since we're talking the island of Haiti or the island of Hispaniola is in the southeast of, of Cuba. So Haiti has two countries. The, the island of Haiti has two countries, the Republic of Haiti and the Dominican Republic. So you have um, Jamaica also uh, in the region in the south, in the south of, of Cuba. So um, why Cuba? Because Cuba was a sort of transit zone because uh, as in the, the final destination of most of the Jew, Jewish refugees was was the United States so uh, so once in Cuba they could um, apply for a US visa and then once they have it they go they enter the United States through Florida especially through Miami So um, since Cuba is like close to, to, the, to Haiti, so, or close to the Dominican Republic or Jamaica, uh, it was possible, highly possible that the Jewish organizations uh, tried to contact other countries in order to accept the, the Jewish refugees on board the SSNW. We did not find some proof of that, proof of uh, contact between Jewish organizations and 
and the, the Haitian government. However, there's another ship that was supposed to land to Cuba. This was the, S, the SS Saint Domingue. This is a ship that uh, left uh, France and it was supposed to arrive in Santiago de Cuba, which is another city in Cuba. And of course, they refused uh, to accept these refugees. And this was said in, on this uh, article of the Jewish Demographic Agency that um, the ship proceeded to Haiti and where it was thought that maybe the, 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 refugee, the refugees might be accepted. So we have no follow-up on that, no proof on whether these Jewish refugees uh, were accepted or not by the Haitian government. Anyway, uh, since the Econ conference, there were some um, changes, changes uh, in the Haitian's, Haitian, Haiti's government position because um, since the end of May of 1939, there were major changes uh, to the Haitian legislation in order to accept uh, Jewish refugees. So under pre President Stenio Vessa, um, so there were three options. The first option was the easiest, I would say, to obtain a Haitian visa through any uh, Haitian consulate in Europe or in, in another country. Uh, so it, after that there was a second option and that's the main option that we're discussing in this presentation. It was naturalization and, it, and not only naturalization, it was in absentia naturalization. So they had the Jewish refugee didn't have to be present in Haiti in order to um, uh, ex a, obtained the Haitian nationality. So this was made possible through the decree law of May 29, 1939. And there was a third option that uh, came uh, like two months after. Um, yeah, another um, legislation that um, allowed uh, Jewish refugees with the status, well, it allowed um, uh, foreigners with the status of refugee. But we're going to mainly talk about the uh, in abstention naturalization through the decree law of May 29, 1939. So, um, what was the content of this legislation? So, there was an amendment um, in, Ju in July 22nd, 1939. So, the, the, this decree law uh, is summarized on the slide. So first of all, it's an amendment of the law of November 29, 1937 on naturalization. And it allowed only a one year period of stay in order to obtain naturalization, either through marriage with a Haitian citizen or by investing capital um, in Haitian agriculture and industry. But uh, some required was quite high, which means that not all refugees could have access to, um, to the in absentia naturalization. Uh, in addition, they had to pay for, for documents, for example, uh, $300 for letter naturalization, um, $200 for tax of naturalization and a, a, a yearly tax of $20, $25. So uh, that's a lot of money, especially for refugees who are leaving their country. Um, so it explains why not a lot of these refugees uh, obtain the Haitian nationality. So where could they um, take the old naturalization? Mainly uh, through the Haitian consulates, not in Germany, of course. Uh, although in Haiti, Haiti had two consulates at the at this period in Berlin and in, in Hamburg, 
but mainly the oil of naturalization was, or, or was taken in in London and Brussels and uh, Lehab in Paris and France and Geneva uh, in Switzerland. It was also possible in the Caribbean, for example, uh, in Ciudad Rio, which is the former name of Santo Domingo, the capital of the Dominican Republic, Kingston, Jamaica, Havana, Cuba, uh, even in the US, during, uh, in the Haitian consulate in New York, and in Port au Prince. So, uh, first question is how many Jewish refugees were naturalized? So uh, after research, we discovered that five Jewish refugees were naturalized according to uh, the regular law of naturalization, which is the law of November 29, 1937. And according to the absentia law, we had 126 refugees. Uh, and the list of these refugees was published on the official journal of the Haitian government, which is called Le Moniteur. Here you have some um, publications regarding na naturalization of some Jewish refugees on Haitian in Haitian newspapers. For example, you have Mr. Sali Khan, who was a German voice and who obtained um, the Haitian nationality prior to the in absentia law. Then you have also uh, Mr. Paul Litter, who happened to be after that consul of uh, Haiti in Shanghai. So the main research questions to uh, to this presentation regarding the in absentia law are the following. Did the Jewish refugees with Haitian nationality arrive in Haiti? This is a big question, and we'll, we'll have the answer during this presentation. If yes, did they stay in Haiti? If if not, if no, in which country did they st settle? Did they keep the Haitian nationality? So that's what we're going to discover uh, right away. So um, in our in order to do this research, we consulted mainly Le Moniteur, which is, like I said, the official journal of the Haitian government, and the list of all the refugees would obtain the in absentia naturalization uh, was published. And we also did some research through ancestry.com. Um, and through ship manifest, through airplane manifest, and even naturalization document, we're able to sort of retrace um, some of these refugees outside of Haiti, of course. So the results of the this research is summarized in this flowchart. It's a very busy flowchart, but you can uh, go through it. So like I said, 126 Jewish refugees were naturalized according to the innocent, in absentia law. But after research, we discovered 58 additional refugees, either wives or children uh, of these refugees, which brings us a total of 184 refugees uh, with the Haitian nationality. So among them, we could see that uh, 58 of them went directly to North America and didn't even go to Haiti. 52 of them went to straight to the US and six went to Canada, but all of these six who were, went to Canada went afterwards to the US. 29 of them stayed in Europe, mainly in Netherlands, but they were, they were in other countries such as Italy, UK, Austria, Belgium, Germany, Liechtenstein, and Switzerland. Of these 29, 10 moved to the US afterwards, after Second World War. And two of them moved to Latin America, especially uh, to Chile. 29 went 
to Latin America, mainly in Brazil, Chile, and then Uruguay, Argentina, Mexico, and Costa Rica. But of these 29, you have uh, 14 of them who went to the US and one of them who left uh, Chile to go to Israel. 26 transited in Cuba. From Cuba, 20, 24 of them went to move to the US. Only two of them settled in Haiti. 15 settled in Haiti, but of these 15, 13 moved afterwards to the US. And unfortunately, we're not, we're not able to retrace 27 of these uh, names through the archives, which means that most of these refugees had the US has final destination and Haiti was sort of perceived like Cuba as a transit zone, waiting for the US visa uh, because of the quota system that was a little bit uh, hard and uh, they, once in Haiti, they applied for the US visa. And once they had it, they went to the US. So let's look at a little bit at the characteristics of these 184 Jewish refugees. Well, it's uh, mainly, there were mainly males, well, 54% of males uh, versus 46% of females. Uh, well, in terms of country of origin, uh, about one third of them came from Germany, then from Poland, uh, uh, Czechoslovakia, Belgium, Austria, and well, for twelve percent of them were unable to determine the country of origin. Uh, where did they apply for the Haitian nationality? Mostly in Brussels in Belgium, 36.5 of them to be exact. Then in Geneva, after that in France, about 12% of them in Rehav or in Paris, then in London, and well, for about 5% of them, we're not able to determine the city of request. And uh, through ANSYS, we were able to find some manifest about some of these refugees. For example, we have Mr. Simon Hoffman, uh, of course, who was a Jew and with a Haitian nationality, who left in the Netherlands through Hag, La Haye in French, of course. And they arrived in Cuba. And from Cuba, they went to Miami, Florida to reside permanently. So this is an example of these um, Jewish refugees with Haitian nationality who never came to Haiti. Uh, second example is, is a document from the Brazilian immigration. This is uh, Noah Nagelschmidt, who had two sons, Pierre and Jean-Francois, uh, with the Haitian nationality, of course. Well, not quite sure that they were in Port-au-Prince, so, and they obtained the Haitian national, their passports in Le Havre, in France. But they ended up in Brazil. Third example is a Jewish refugee. This is Hansi Max Emden, uh, who, who landed in Chile and afterwards obtained the the Chilean nationality. So you can find some documents through Ancestry um, showing clearly that uh, most of these refugees did not, although they had uh, Haitian documents, did not arrive in Haiti, never arrived in Haiti. So this is an example of a, a letter of naturalization given by the Haitian government. This is the paper that uh, um, declares that the, ref the, the refugee has the Haitian nationality. And this is Mr. Baum. Uh, this is from uh, a book that I found on, at the library of the Center for Jewish History. 
And it was from a book published by Mina Baumbiana, who's in fact the, the eldest daughter of Mr. Baum, was from Germany. So um, thanks to the JDC archive, we could once again confirm that most of these Jewish refugees did not arrive in Haiti. This is a correspondence letter uh, of the GRCH, which is the Joint Relief Committee of Haiti that represented the JDC uh, in, in Port Prince Haiti, um, explaining what we already suspected that most or well, several refugees multinational national never came to Haiti and they landed either in the United States, North America, or in Latin America. Another letter uh, dated from uh, the end of October 1941, uh, explaining that the Haitian government decided to end all process of naturalization because they discovered that most of these refugees in fact, did not come uh, to Haiti, and they used the Haitian nationality to, to as a cover up to, to go elsewhere. So the uh, this naturalization process ended under the presidency of Mr. Eli Lesco, who was president of Haiti from 1941 to 1946. So as I already mentioned, at the end of October 1941, all pro requests for naturalization was put on hold. And with the decree of September, oh, sorry, of February 4th, 1942, it was ordered that all refugees, all foreigners, well, all refugees with Haitian nationality come back to Haiti to, uh, to confirm that, well, sort of, that they were in fact in Haiti. And with the decree of August 5th, 1942, for all of these refugees who did not show up, their Haitian national was revoked. And the list of all these refugees was published uh, in the in the monitor on, on December 3rd, 1942. So you have a, a part of the list of these Jewish refugees published in the monitor who, whose Haitian nationality was revoked. So as conclusions of, of this research, we can say that several changes were made in the, to the Haitian legislation in order to accept to Jewish refugees on Haitian soil. So we, we were able to retrace about, well, 184 refugees um, who obtained the Haitian national through the, the in absentia law. And only four of them settled in Haiti. Most of them lost the Haitian nationality in, the top, in 1942. And of course, uh, we were able to confirm through uh, ancestry.com that they obtained the Haitian, most of them obtained the, the, the US nationality. And about two thirds of them landed in the US. And the other third landed mostly in Latin America or st even stayed in Europe. And it is important to remember that, to remind that um, there is about 27 of these refugees that we're unable to trace. So uh, as credits or acknowledgements, I'd like to um, say, end this presentation by saying that most of this research, this research was done thanks to Haiti Holocaust survivors, thanks to um, Ancestry.com archives, the JDC archive, um, the Center for Jewish History and the New York Times archives. So, if for further reading, if you have, if you want to, 
uh, see the list of these uh, Jewish refugees with Haitian nationality. So uh, my book, Haiti's Jewish Refugee, uh, Jewish History was published um, uh, this year in the beginning of this year, especially on, on January 27th. And it's available on Amazon. The French version was available since 2013. Uh, thank you for listening and see you next time for another presentation on Haiti and the show.